everyone, welcome to my channel, A Handful of Daisies DIY. If you're new here, I'm Elaine. In this week's video, we're going to be working on cutting boards. I have a whole bunch of cutting boards in my stash that I picked up at uh, the thrift store. So we're going to change them from regular cutting boards to decorative cutting boards. So if that's something you're interested in, let's get started. We're going to get started today um, sanding down all of these cutting boards um, using my orbital sander and a pretty heavy grit sandpaper. I think it's an 80 to get started and then I'll go to a finer grit to smooth it out. I'm going to sand it all over um, on the edges, the top and the bottom, but I'm not worried about getting all the way down. I want to leave a little um, of the brown. Then we're going to take them inside and I printed off these graphics um, on my inkjet printer. And I'm going to Mod Podge them on each one of the cutting boards. So I just printed them in reverse. Wake up early when you're here by my side It feels good when you hold me So I'm going to spread my Mod Podge out on the paper using um, this brush I picked up at Walmart. It's a really um, soft brush. So good I almost died. And then I'm going to turn it over and just use my brayer to smooth it down really well so it's stuck to the board um, all over. And then I'm going to put that to the side and go ahead and do the same thing on all of the boards. So the next one I'm using um, this Cluck Oink Moo. I had this in my stash and I thought it was really farmhousey, so um, I decided to use this one. Again, I'm just going to put my Mod Podge directly on the paper and then turn it over onto the board. Now the first two cutting boards I had picked up at Dollar General um, quite a while back. I haven't seen them in the stores in a while, um, but they, I had these in my hoard because I bought five or six of them. Um, I had two left to use for this project. Now all of the rest of the cutting boards I picked up at the Goodwill. Um, for either $0.99 cent or $1.99 was the most expensive one. So the next graphic is this ice cream churn. I believe I picked up this graphic from the Graphics Ferry. If you've never been out to the Graphics Ferry site, you should check that out. They have a lot of vintage um, graphics that are free, so you can download them for free. 
and I have used a lot of um, their graphics in my projects. So this next one is just a cow. I've used this cow on several projects as well. This one came from the graphics fairy as well. Again, just putting the Mod Podge on my paper and then turning it over. Just remember when you're doing this to um, mirror your graphic before you print it. I'm just trying to eyeball it to get it in the middle. You can kind of see through the paper where the graphic is to be able to line it up. Now these long um, boards, I'm putting the same graphic on these. Um, this graphic is a coffee turn. And again, it came from the graphics fairy. Now I had planned on using one of the scorch pens on one of the cutting boards. I had never tried that before and I wanted to try it, but everywhere I went was sold out. So I may just have to order one from Amazon. I do still want to try that. So this cow fit perfectly on this smaller board. And again, just make sure you're smoothing it out really well so you don't have any air pockets under there to make sure all of your ink adheres to your board. So much pressure, but we always come together. I know we have a treasure, a feeling we can measure. So I'm going to leave all the boards to set overnight and then I'm going to come back with my spray bottle and spray it down with water. Now this part takes a little time and um, it works your fingers pretty hard. My, my hands got really tired doing all of these boards, but you're just going to use your finger to get the paper off and you want to make sure you're not pressing down too hard just enough to get that paper off um, i did use my rag a little bit um, but i found that it was trying to pull the ink up as well so you just have to be really careful with it i just keep putting water on it I'm going to do the same thing to all the boards. If you have this many projects at one time, you may want to take a break in between. Or your hands will be really sore. But this is a great way to put a graphic on a project without having a cutting machine or stencils. Now I do have an inkjet printer, but I think you can use any type of printer to do this. Here's a look at how all of them turned out. Um, I did take them all out and spray them with polyurethane to seal them in really good. And then I came back just to embellish them a little bit. So I'm gonna paint just around the top 
of this board in the Waverly ink um, chalk paint. I just thought it needed a little something more. Now these are decorative cutting boards um, since I'm putting the stencils and the paint on them. But the other side of the cutting board, I just left the way it was. So if someone was to use it, they could use the other side. Now on this one, I'm just gonna paint around the edge. Now you could have just left these the way they were, but I always have to add a little something. What about you? Do you think I should have left them the way they were, or do you like the extra embellishments? Let me know in the comments below. So on the next two cutting boards, I'm going to tape around the top and I'm going to paint just the, the handle, the top part. And I can't paint a straight line, so I always have to use my tape to tape it up so I can get that crisp line. And you can add different colors to this. Um, I am partial to black and white, so you'll see I use black and white on a lot of my projects. I am trying to do a little bit more color, but I thought the black um, was appropriate for these projects. going to do the same thing on this one. My paint was getting a little thick, so I did squirt a little water in my bottle so it would come out a little more smooth. This Waverly ink paint is thick anyway and it's very pigmented so you can water it down and still get that deep black. So on the small board, the cow, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And then I decided I'm going to go back and add some rope to the top of the last two cutting boards. Just something to hang it with. On the last two, um, the long ones, I'm just going to put these dried flowers on the top. I'm going to use some twine just to wrap around the bottom and tie it onto the top.
Now when I'm doing a project like this, I normally have a whole stack of different kinds of embellishments to work with. And then just along the way, I figure out which one I want to add to each piece. And sometimes I change my mind two or three times before I ever get to the finished piece. But I thought these dried flowers were appropriate for um, these last two boards. I'm not sure where I picked up these dried flowers. I've had them in my hoard for quite a while. Again, I'm just going to wrap that one around the bottom and then just tie it to the top. Sometimes there's so much pressure, but we always come together. I know we have a treasure, a feeling we can measure. And I thought those turned out really well. Here's another look at what they look like before, and here's the after. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and what would you have done with these boards. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel grow. And if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and join our DIY family. Don't forget the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. You'll also find me on Facebook. I do have a Facebook VIP group that you can join and share your DIY projects. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week.